Good morning and welcome. Today we the church celebrate Palm Sunday, the final Sunday of Lent and the beginning of Holy Week, the most solemn week in the church's calendar. It commemorates the triumphant arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem. In the Gospels, we are told that Jesus entered Jerusalem riding a young donkey and was praised by the townspeople who believed he would free them from Rome's power. The customary practice at the time to honor people of great respect would be by laying down garments or throwing olive or palm branches in front of them as they processed. To remember this event, the Mass would usually begin with the blessing of the palms and a short gospel reading accounting the events of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. But due to the virus, that is not possible this year, so the palm branches have already been blessed. Now, as we begin our celebration, we thank you for silencing any electronic devices that you may have brought into the church so we could have uninterrupted worship together. And we'll just take a quick moment to quiet ourselves as we now prepare our worship. Visiting with us and presiding this morning is Father Jerry, assisted by our own Deacon Sonny. And with all of that, let's stand to begin. Six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. Lift up your gates, lift up your arches, let the King of glory come. Lift up your hearts and sing your people, let the King of glory come. Who is the King of glory? Yahweh, holy and strong. Who is the Lord of majesty? Yahweh, mighty and strong. Lift up your gates, lift up your arches, let the King of glory come. Lift up your hearts and sing your people, let the King of glory come. Let the King of glory come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And as we gather on this Palm Sunday, let us go with Jesus, not only through his suffering and dying, but share ultimately in the glory of his resurrection. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
at me, they mock me and they shake their heads. You relied on the Lord, let the Lord be your St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
for the gospel. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, 
This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, <clears throat> Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. He said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him, and lead him away securely. He came, and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. 
the high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophecy. And the guards greeted him with blows. When Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too are with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas, for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to be crucified. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lot for them to see which each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. 
The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Daha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross, and we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and Joses, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb, tomb that had been hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we enter into Holy Week and listen to the Passion from Mark's Gospel, let me make a, a simple statement for you to consider. Jesus did not die in his sleep. At first, that might sound like a strange statement to make. We know from the gospel accounts that Jesus did not die from some accident or from some terrible disease. Neither did he just float off to heaven or die in his sleep. Rather, Jesus suffered a cruel and torturous death 
as we've just heard. Crucifixion is probably one of the most horrendous means of execution. It was designed to make the victim experience pain for as much as possible and for as long as possible. And if Jesus had died in his sleep, we would probably say, oh, he got off easy. As we hear of other people who pass away, we say, oh, how lucky they were. But clearly that was not what happened. Paul reminds us in that second reading, Jesus did not regard equality with God something to be grasped at, but rather he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. No, Jesus did not get off easy. And as he went into Jerusalem, he knew He knew what lie ahead. The forces of darkness had been gathering for many days and the opposition to him was mounting. But he did not turn back. He did not run from his appointed hour. He entered into his suffering and dying freely and completely. Somehow it seems to me that it was part of God's plan that the cross would become the sign and symbol of our salvation, this extreme way of suffering and dying. And what better image could we have? What what could be more gripping, more riveting, more convincing of God's love than the cross? Every Palm Sunday, I'm reminded of an incident that happened many years ago to me when I was stationed at Holy Name of Mary in Valley Stream. I was helping to decorate the church for Palm Sunday. That was mistake number one. (laughs) Mistake number two, I climbed a very high ladder in the process in the sanctuary, but I fell off the ladder and as a result, uh, it was a severe break in my right ankle and it required immediate surgery. It took me off to Mercy Hospital where I spent all of Holy Week. But in my hospital room, there was a plain little crucifix on the wall. I had seen many crucifixes before, but suddenly that image of Jesus suffering on the cross in that hospital room spoke to me so profoundly. I could relate to Jesus suffering in a way that I hadn't before because of my own suffering, nothing like his, but the cross did speak to me how Jesus suffered. And at that moment, I felt somehow that he knew what I was going through, that he was with me and I was with him on the cross. Perhaps in your life, you have gazed on the crucifix at some point And that image may have also spoken to you. You We we all deal with suffering. It's an inescapable part of our humanity. And as we ultimately approach our own death, we will have to face some degree of suffering, most of us. Uh, Just think of what people have gone through this pandemic all the suffering involved, physical, but not just physical, but mental, emotional, even spiritual. And yet, it is a moment like this that the cross speaks to us so, so powerfully. And to whom do we turn if not the one who knows all about suffering, who is with us in our suffering and who will bring us through suffering and even death into eternal life? Most of us have a crucifix in our home. Many of us wear one. Perhaps we pass by that crucifix without much thought, but these days of Holy Week, we're invited to recall deeply Jesus' suffering and death. It's an opportune time for us to stop and take a few moments to look at that cross, identify with that cross, and glory in that cross. 
No, Jesus did not die in his sleep. He chose the narrow path of self-sacrifice and surrendered his life on the cross for our sake. We only need to look to the cross to know what suffering is and know what love is. Again and now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, but of God before all things, and of God the Son of the Father, and of God the Son of the Father, and of God the Son of the Father, and of God the Son of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we commemorate the passion of our Lord, let us ask God for the grace that will sustain us in all our needs. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For God's church, that by our love for one another, we may inspire those around us to a deeper faith in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold offices of public trust, that they may prudently protect the rights and dignity of the poor and the elderly and help people to live in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may listen eagerly for God's word to us, Take it to heart and act on it this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Pat McMahon, Philip Gurbino, Tilde De Silva, Anthony Mirando, Robert Woshik, Sean Barella, that they may find healing in the knowledge that they are loved by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially Dorothy Condon, and Reverend Simon Palaparibul, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions in our prayer intentions book. And the prayers that we keep in our hearts. And for Alice, Alice Walsh, and Genevieve Walsh, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in every age you fulfill your promises. Renewed by your holy word, we gather in the name of Jesus, your Son. We ask these things in his name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oh, uh, 
sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Though indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed out the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our lasting peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his coming again, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with, thanks, with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray to the Father seeking his will in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Can you stand under my room? Let me say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Do not 
understand what they do. Scattered are the hearts I call to oneness. They have gone astray and lost their way. Choking off their spirits with a heart of stone. They deny me, they betray me. See now the tears for my flock. Forgive them, Father, forgive them. They do not understand, they do not understand what they do. Empty are the souls who search without me. Yearning for the peace I long to give Leading precious children from my dying light They deny me, they betray me See now my love for my flock. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. They do not understand. They do not understand. What they do, they do not understand. What Nourished with these sacred gifts, O Lord, we humbly beseech you that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Some quick announcements. The Divine Mercy Novena begins on Good Friday. For more information, visit our website as shown on the front page of the bulletin. And click on the link for the Divine Mercy under Quick Links. <clears throat> Please see the bulletin for information regarding the special services during Holy Week. And as always, please remember to take home the bulletin when you leave Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Oh, sacred 
Oh. 